I thank uh, Mr. Nan for his truly thought-provoking uh, statement. And I now have uh, the great honor to uh, give the floor to another uh, Nobel Prize laureate, uh, the Nobel Pro Professor Carlo Rubio, Nobel Prize Physics Laureate and Senator for Life of the Italian Republic. Professor Rubio is also a former Director General of CERN. Professor Rubio. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, science is a former expression has existed across all cultural and geographic barriers as an objective search for natural phenomena. Like music, it is a universal language in its fundaments, stimulated with a universal, objective, nature-driven, and very often mathematical language. During the first major phase of the modern and industrialized society, until the beginning of the Second World War, several major countries of Europe had vastly dominated the scene. A reference to the most outstanding contribution to mankind may be represented by the Nobel Prizes in Physics, Chemistry, Literature, Peace, Philosophy, Medicine, and Economic Sciences. In the period from its beginning in 1901 until 1940, Europe has had as many as 169 laureates in comparison with only 22 from the United States. Incidentally, most of the America best physicists at the time had been trained and at work in Europe's pre-war laboratories. Two major events have dramatically changed the situation. The first event has been the immense destructions during the World War II, with an estimated death toll of 85 million, making it the deadliest, <coughs> deadliest war in the world's history in absolute terms of total casualties. The figure includes 19 to 25 million deaths from war-related diseases and famine. Civilians killed totally from 38 to 55 million, the military death from 22 to 25 million, including the death in captivity of about 5 million prisoners of war. The second major event occurring at the same time and which has profoundly changed the situation has been the extraordinary growth in science and technology of the United States initially triggered by the demands of the war, but then widely extending to all different domains, far above any possible competition from the old continent, then still recovering from war-related massive losses and destructions. In the aftermath of devastated European infrastructure and economies, in order to survive, Europeans developed new concepts. Cooperation in many domains has been forged through increasing economic interdependence and a progressive internationalization. A renovated science research has been amongst these leading steps. The first ideas for international laboratory were put forward as early 1946 with the United Nations organizations. It was only in December 1949 that this focused on achieving European collaboration in nuclear physics. The convention establishing the European Organization for Nuclear Research, the CERN, in Geneva, was approved by 12 member states in Paris in 1953 and entered into force the 29th of September 1954. He stated, the organization shall provide for collaboration amongst European states in nuclear research on a pure scientific and fundamental character and in a research essentially related thereto. The organization shall have no concern with work for military requirements, and the results of the experimental and theoretical work shall be published or otherwise made generally available. This extraordinary scientific organization was created by a remarkable group of founding fathers at the threshold of renewed European prosperity, not only to promote pure and open science in the global European scale, but also to create trust and unity between people of different European countries traditions and mentalities. Indeed, its purpose were not only to build a world-class laboratory for nuclear and particle physics in Europe, but also to bring near to each other other historically fighting people together through science. Oppenheimer and many other American physicists were amongst those who believed that Europeans would no longer be able to remain amongst the best scientific leaders unless they had pooled their money and talents. By 1950, the project has gained considerable momentum. And another American physicist, Isaac Rabi, had presented the idea to the member states of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, the UNESCO, at a meeting in Florence. 
One of the CERN founding fathers, the French diplomat Francois de Rose, who died at year, last year, this year, at year 104, has recalled the many paradoxes in the difficult foundation of such a great institution. For example, at the 1951 meeting, unusually for the time, the United Kingdom took an opposite position to the American known wishes. Also unusual was the fact that the United States felt, felt more strongly than Werner, Werner Eisenberg from Germany the need to strengthen European science as a major component of European culture. Clearly, yesterday's conflicts were not so easy to overcome. The example of CERN was promptly followed by several other European research organizations in a number of different domains. ESA, space activity, EMBL, molecular biology, ESO, astronomy, astrophysics, ESRF, synchrotron radiation, ILL, neutron source, and EFTA, fusion technology. They mobilize until today the substantial combined expertise in research and the management of large international projects for the benefit of European development. All of them succeeded beautifully. Today, CERN is 60 years old. Its unique feature play host to the, how, about, around half of the world particle physics. Its membership has grown to most of the European states, with many countries from beyond the European region also taking part as member states have pulled their resources to make CERN their natural laboratory for particle physics. Over the last decade, CERN has become, from an initial European laboratory, a unique facility of a planetary scale. The internationalization of science has been one of the main reasons of the renovated success of Europe in a balanced dimension with respect to the rest of the world. For instance, the previously mentioned Nobel Prize indicator has left a, to a renovated balance between Europe and US, respectively for 225 and 217 low rates from 1961 until today. The 1984 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to two CERN staff researchers, Simon van der Meer and myself, for the development which led to the discoveries of the W and Z boson. The 1992 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to another CERN staff researcher, George Sharpak, for its invention and development of particle detectors, in particular the multi-wire proportional chambers. The recent 1913 Nobel Prize in Physics to Francois Engelert and Peter Higgs have been motivated as through the discovery of the predicted fundamental particle by ATLAS and CMS experiments at the CERN Large Hadron Collider. The World Wide Web began its CERN project called Enquire, initiated by two other CERN staff researchers, Tim Berners-Lee in, in 1989 and Robert Caillot in 1990. On 30th of April, 1993, I have announced, as a CERN DG, that the World Wide Web would be free to anyone. The web, as well as many other technological fillouts, are an outstanding example on how basic research can generate progress in completely unforeseeable way, technology transfer at its best. Whilst there was no doubt they would have appeared somewhere, sometime, the driving force of high energy physics research and the productive atmosphere of CERN made the web happen here and first. Science in a wide community effort is, science is a wide community effort. It depends on free access to information and exchange of ideas. In this spirit, CERN is not an isolated laboratory, but rather a focus for extensive worldwide community that now includes some 10,000 physicists from 500 universities and about 100 countries. These scientists form international collaboration through seismics to conceive, build, and run experiments. Such a collaboration are large. Today, they generally include hundreds of physicists, engineers, and other kinds of experts. They jointly design and build highly complex equipment, operate it during the running life of their experiments, and work together on the results. To conclude, one of the fundamental principles of which CERN and the other similar open institutions have been based is that major scientific discoveries are a patrimony belonging to the knowledge of the whole of mankind. That is, as such, they should be made freely available to every human on Earth. Thank you.